liturgical year of Don Prosper Garanger. January 30th, St. Bethilde, Queen of France. At the side of the holy widow Paula, who, out of love for Bethlehem, fled the grandeurs of Rome and the sweetness of human life, assists today another widow, a pious queen of the Franks who, to follow Jesus in the abasements from her hidden life, left the palace where she sat as sovereign and once dictated laws to a whole people. Mother of three kings, Bethil, that after having, in a brilliant regency, regulated the destinies of the Franks, passed wise laws, restrained the indocility of the lords, abolished slavery, made religion flourish, tore herself away from people to shut herself up during the last 15 years of her life in her dear abbey of Chalais. Like the Magi of the East, she sees the star which calls her to Bethlehem, and the contemplation of the divine child in the manger has more charms for her. Faithful to the end, in the search for the God of Bethlehem, it is not to be served but to serve, that she comes to seek asylum in the monastery she founded. She wants to be the last of all there, and hastens to all the offices in which the humility of her Savior appears more clearly. Thus is shown again the strength of our Emmanuel, who, from his cradle, seduces hearts and attracts souls to the point of making them forget everything that is not him. Let us congratulate these two illustrious widows, Bethilde and Paula, on being admitted into the company of the virgins who triumphed in these days of virginal childbirth. Our Emmanuel does not disdain the man's wife when she keeps his supreme love for him, and if it is just that the first honors of his court should be for the virgins who loved him only, he puts his bliss in filling every heart that sighs for him. We take the lessons of St. Berthilde from the Paris Breviary of 1680. Bethilde was born in England of the race of the Saxons. Pirates sold it to Archibald, mayor of that place, who entrusted him with the job of presenting the cup, and after the death of his wife, he offered her his hand. Bethilde, to avoid this alliance, fled into retirement, but soon the excellent qualities of her mind and her body made her marry by Clovis II, without her expecting it. She employed all her zeal in recommending the poor and the churches to her, which the king was so charmed with that he gave her to help her in her works of piety, the Abbe Genesius, who was afterwards Bishop of Lyon. On the death of Clovis, she was entrusted with the guardianship of her three sons, Clartaire, Childric, and Thierry, the eldest of whom had barely reached his fifth year, but aided by the advice of Crothelbert, Bishop of Paris, she made a large number of excellent regulations on the entreaties of the bishops, abolished the medical ordinations, she forbade selling Christians to foreigners and driving them out of the country to sell them. She ransomed many of them herself from slavery at her own expense. It excited the zeal of bishops and abbots to preserve or restore regular discipline in the monasteries of St. Denis, St. Germain, St. Pierre, St. Medard, St. Agnan, St. Martin, and several others. She built a monastery in Gorbet on the Somme, and that of Chiles on the Marne. Then, leaving the government of the kingdom to Clotaire, who was already an adult, she herself took, in this last monastery, the habit of religion, and there, under the obedience of Abbess Portil, she appeared a model of perfection and a subject of admiration. You have understood, O Bethild, that the sovereign good for man is in the love and possession of the Savior who was born to us, and that we can taste it only by associating ourselves with his sentiments and his works. That is why, as soon as it was possible for you, you broke your bonds, you took the wings of the dove, and you fled into solitude to be closer to him. How irresistible, then, are the charms of the God who has hidden himself beneath the appearance of our weakness. He draws to himself, even from the heart of the courts of the earth, generous souls, and no human force can hold them back. How often has the example given by you, O Holy Queen, been followed in the course of the centuries? Who could count the princesses, queens, and even empresses who descended from the throne to seek the divine child? But this Savior who calls the great of the earth does not disdain the little ones, and the shepherds of Bethlehem receive his first caresses. Mary, Queen of Bethlehem, sings in her ineffable canticle, He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and he has exalted the lowly. Get us to be humble and simple, O Bethilde, so that we may be admitted with you 
into this happy palace of our common king. Remember also the France you govern. Give her order and peace. Bring piety back into honor in our country. Multiply there the asylums of Christian perfection. And since you were a saint in the middle of the century and of public affairs, pray for those whom the bonds of duty still attach to this world. Make them find in the depths of their hearts that solitude where the soul free from illusions finds and possesses its God in the peace promised in these days to men of goodwill.